I had a disease called Hirschsprung. Early on, I believe it was our second date, me and Sarah sat down and, and I, uh, I basically said, hey, look, with me, kids are gonna be a little bit different. And God said, start a family. And I thought, start a family, like, I didn't even know what that looks like. And I immediately called a number on Buckner Children's Home. And so he came and he had all this paperwork and kind of talked through what does foster to adopt look like. And I didn't want to do it. I could risk losing my own kid. Why would I risk losing someone else's? Like, this is not for us. We took the paperwork and we set it down. And about a month later, there was a leadership night at our church. I think we were the very last couple that they pulled up on stage and he goes, and I see you as rescuing kids. And I'm like, what does that mean? The next day at lunch, we literally, at the exact same time, said the exact same thing. What do you think about foster to adopt? So we knew right then, like, okay, God, you're ordering our steps. July 1st, we were a stamped certified foster home. And uh, I get a call from the foster agency or from Buckner. So we have a placement for you. It's a little girl. They were like, do you want to say yes? I go, yes, but I need to call Sarah. I prayed the whole way to the hospital, like that we would just be a light in this little girl's life. We got there and they said, hey, the mom wants to meet you. And so they took us into the hospital room and the mom looked up. I could see the hurt in their faces. <laughs> CPS said, you wanted to meet the Browns, they're here. And she said, do you want to hold her? She had to be her baby and she just lost it. And I thought, God, how do I pray? How do I pray for my family to succeed if this family's breaking? Kyra came home with us. We found out the mom was pregnant again. We started praying for that baby. I hear an audible voice from the Lord say call the hospital. I walk over to my phone and I googled the hospital Cairo was born at and when they picked up I said yes is so and so there having a baby and they said yes and I hung up. I called CPS and then about a few hours later they called me back and said yes she was in labor but she was only 27 weeks and it was cocaine induced. They were able to stop it. Yes so. they were able to stop it and then that night one of my friends from church called and said, do you want to know what you're having? She said, it's a boy. And we named him Jeremiah. We already had a nursery set. We had his name on the wall. He was born a year and 12 days after Kyra. Yeah, about six weeks after Jeremiah was born, we found out about an older sister um, who needed a home. CPS arranged like a sibling visit where we got to meet her. She walked into our house and was like, hey, mom, I'm home. I think she had met me one time. That's Kenna. So we had now a one-year-old, a newborn, and Kenna. Uh, Five at the time. And we found out she was pregnant again. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm done. Like, <laughs> I went from zero to three kids very, very quickly. And the mom had gotten my number and messaged me on Facebook and asked me to call her. And I did, and she said, hey, did you hear I'm pregnant? And I said, I, I did hear that. So then she said, well, it's a little boy and I want you to have him. So I came home and I told Micah and I said, would we even name him? And Micah goes, Josiah, cool. And Micah was like, yeah, we'll take him. It's gonna be fine. And my pediatrician had said something on Facebook that made me believe that it was our baby. And I messaged him and he said, I'm gonna call you. He says, Sarah, he was born. He's at least 10 weeks premature. His lungs aren't developed. I had to intubate him. I sent him to the nearest NICU. I don't think he's gonna make it through the night. I was crushed. And then I just hit hit my knees in prayer. I just kept saying, Jesus saves. Josiah means Jesus saves. He's gonna save him. He's gonna be okay. That night, the mom had gotten a hold of me and asked me if we would visit him in the NICU because she's in another town and he's all alone in the NICU. She said, I put you down as his mom so you can go see him. And we went to the NICU and saw the tiniest baby fighting for his life. But the mom had called me the next day. She asked if we would come see her. She wanted me to take her to the hospital and I had said no, because with drugs, it didn't want to get in trouble with the law. The next time I went to the NICU, they said, I'm sorry, you've been taken off the list to see him. And she had told them we couldn't come anymore. And so at that point, CPS got involved and CPS called the hospital and said, you will give the Browns visitation rights, but you will do it privately. Nobody needs to know that they are there. But one night we were there, she showed up while we were there. And so while she was washing in, the nurses hit us and then took us out back doors. And then in court, when CPS said the Browns were there every night, she was kind of shocked. But we were given custody. Josiah was about a month old. We noticed right away that he wasn't hitting his milestones like the others were. Neurologists finally were able to see that he um, had a brain injury at birth. And we were given the diagnosis of cerebral palsy and told that he would never walk. 
And Mike, I just didn't accept that. Here we are, 10 years later. He runs. He, he, he runs, <laughs> runs everywhere he goes, plays baseball as a pitcher. As a first base coach, I nearly cried just seeing him run into first and keeping up with everybody else. God has done an amazing work in our family and blessed us with four beautiful children. Thank you.